yeah. On the 18th of May, 1830, British inventor Edwin Budding went into partnership with foundry owner John Ferriby to manufacture the world's first lawnmower. Excuse me, take a few minutes to mellow out. Big Daddy Kane is on the mic, and I'ma tell about a minimum length of rhymes with strength and power. So listen to the man of the hour flow and go to a slow tempo. Edwin Budding grew up near the Gloucestershire town of Stroud, where he often saw teams of labourers using scythes to manually cut the lawns of the landed gentry. The labour intensive nature of this work would later inspire him to create the ubiquitous lawn mowing machine. Having begun work in an iron foundry as a pattern maker, Budding came across a mechanical napping machine created by John Lewis in 1815 that was used to trim fibres from the surface of woven cloth to produce an even finish. Later developments to this machine used a cylindrical cutting blade that directly influenced Budding's lawnmower design. Powered by a large iron roller and a series of gears that span the cutting cylinder close to a knife plate, Budding's mower was pushed from behind. A second roller could be adjusted to alter the cutting height while the clippings were flung into a collection box at the front. On the 18th of May, Budding signed an agreement with John Ferriby, owner of the Phoenix Ironworks at the nearby town of Thrupp, to manufacture the machine. One of the first models was sold to Regent's Park Zoological Gardens in London, where the head gardener reported that the new lawnmower allowed two men to do as much work as six or eight men with scythes. Ferriby subsequently licensed other manufacturers to produce budding mowers while Budding returned to inventing. Lawn mowing on the hover principle was something never dreamt of when the hovercraft was invented, but here it is. The rotor blade can be adjusted for height of cut, and the mower is so light, women can use it easily. Something that men gardeners have waited for for a long time. Starting up the two and a half horse two-stroke is easy, and that lifts the whole thing onto a cushion of air in the familiar way. Whether the grass is short or resembles jungle, it's all one to the hover mower. All you have to do is guide it. Gardeners' jobs got much easier in 1830 with the invention of the first mechanical lawnmower. Nowadays, most lawnmowers have electric motors or gas engines. They turn blades that are either on a reel and cut like scissors, or rotate like a propeller to chop the grass.
These gas mowers have rotary blades that spin horizontally on a vertical crankshaft. To make the blade housing, which is called the deck, a machine first applies a lubricating chemical to sheet steel which was coiled when it came to the factory. The chemical helps flatten it so it's easier to cut. A press then perforates the sheet every 60 centimeters. After the press separates the segments and rounds off the corners, a robotic arm moves each segment onto a die. A 500-ton press bends the steel like tin foil between two molds to give the deck its basic shape. A robot lifts the oily decks with suction cups and moves them to another press. This machine trims away the excess around the deck's edges. Another machine bends the sharp bottom lip inward to make the deck safer to handle. The factory uses robots because they work faster than humans, processing 500 decks an hour. After a thorough cleaning, the decks move into an electrostatic paint booth. They lace the powder paint with a negative electric charge, the decks with a positive one. This draws the paint particles onto the decks, creating a thorough and even coat. The factory's six paint booths are on tracks, so when it's time to change color, workers can easily switch the entire chamber for a clean one. The paint cures at 190 degrees Celsius for 15 minutes. This press bends two and a half meter long tubing to form the mower's upper handle. Another press bends 1.8 meter long tubes to make a shorter, lower handle. Workers will later attach the two handles to form one folding handle. By folding, it takes up less space in the shipping box and later in your garage. Here's the mower's five horsepower engine. A worker attaches it to the deck with three bolts. He uses a powerful torque gun so the bolts won't loosen because of vibrations. Later, workers will mount the blades to the engine's crankshaft that protrudes through an opening in the deck. Next, workers install a plastic rear door through which the grass clippings eject. This door attaches to brackets which have levers that adjust the mower to nine different height positions. It's time to mount the plastic rear wheels. Next, an adapter to stabilize the blade on the crankshaft. Then, the blade. It's wider at each end to create the proper airflow inside the deck. They secure the blade tightly with a powerful wrench because it's going to spin at 3300 RPM. The front wheels are one-third smaller than the back ones. This makes the mower easier to maneuver over uneven terrain. They put rubber covers on the height adjustment levers so they're softer on the fingers. The mower adjusts from two and a half to nearly nine centimeters off the ground. They secure the lower handle then loosely attach the upper handle to the lower one. The consumer can tighten this after shipping. They add a safety handle that turns the engine off if you're not squeezing it against the upper handle. It attaches to a caliper system, much like what you'd find on a bicycle. Finally, workers apply labels to indicate the mower's horsepower and width. Fill her up with gas, and she's ready to cut your lawn down to size.